Hey Mark in Longmont, California, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses, well, actually non-prescription, let's try this again shall we? I'm going to show you how I cut a bifocal lens that has no power in the top and a 150 in the bottom for the new Ray-Ban 6317 color 2836 which is the matte brown in the 49i size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging that Ray-Ban sends it to me in. Of course your hard Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and the star of the show, the main attraction, it is the Ray-Ban 6317. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from overseas. And I'm going to include that when I ship to you. But again, this is the Ray-Ban 6317, color 2836 in the 49i size. So it almost looks like the vintage Clubmaster. I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses. And I'm going to put in, put your frame into the tracing element of my edger and hit start. Everybody wants to know how does the computer know what shape lens to cut. This is why that little stylus pops up and it goes around and traces the shape of the right lens before doing the same thing for the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars that you're not using you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Of course Mark you upgraded to the bifocal lens you upgraded to transitions and that is your out-of-pocket expense on these at least as far as the lens goes. So that is the shape of the lens that is about to show up on the screen. That's only magnified while I work on it. If I minify it, you will see that is the shape of the lens I will be cutting, that green outline. I'm going to put in your pupillary distance into that box right there that you have sent me. And I'm going to put the bifocal height right here in this box. Now let's go ahead and magnify it again. I'm going to be cutting a line style bifocal, so I need to change the grid. I'm going to take the right lens let me double check that is the right that is put the right lens onto the platform now this is a block or as i like to call them jenny from the block i need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting this is what's going to hold it in place in the lathe inside the edger so i need to use a double-sided adhesive sticker of which i've got a couple hanging over my head the black side is the sticky side i'm going to stick that onto the first block let's do the same thing now for the second block now on the back of this block is a little silver button. That is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. The first time, let's go ahead and let it do it the first time. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side the sticky side. This magnet is going to marry itself to something magnetical. And here, that little silver button inside the arm. And I'm going to, let me find my stylus. That line that you see there is the top of the bifocal. I want to line it up on that grid giving me both the vertical meridian and the horizontal to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. I'm going to hit that button. The block's going to come down and be placed onto your right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. That's going to flip over. All the measurements are going to mirror the right. Let's pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line everything up perfectly and put everything inside the grid where it's supposed to go. Hit that button and now the block's going to come down and be placed onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need me anymore. But I'm going to pull the shape up onto the computer. There is that. I'm going to place your lens into... Now the magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. But I'm going to program it. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic or high index plastic or Trivex, I would select those. I do not want to polish the edge of the lenses. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Actually, do I have my little flashlight? Where is that hiding at? Come on, are you still working flashlight? You are. Okay, good, good, good. So, the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper. 
to grind the lens down to its final shape. That wheel in the center is what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door is going to close. The clamp is going to shut, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the lens. And of course, the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once is going to measure the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Now you have no prescription in the top, so you're not going to have really much any edge thickness, but I do cut strong prescription lenses all day long. And that does become more critical there. Now if you see light flickering in the background, that is to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index lenses cut wet, as well as Trivex. Now in just a moment, your lens will touch down onto the cutting wheel. As I said before, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. This is permanent and will never need to be reapplied. Now again, it's just double checking its own measurements to know exactly where to place the bevel. If you notice your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel, if I were to take it out now it would stand up on the counter on its own. But it's now it's going to get the knife-like bevel cut into the lens. A very dull knife, just like me, but a knife-like edge nonetheless. In fact, your lenses will be so sharp, you'll be able to cut through a piece of wet tissue, providing that you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight. Then you might be able to cut through the tissue. Now, as you've seen, water has begun spraying on the lens. It does this for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that may be left over on the edge of the lens. Now in just a moment you will see a lever come out. At the end of that lever is a little spinning wheel, something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool. That's what's going to put the safety bevel onto the rear surface of the lens. Should you have any edge thickness coming off the back of the lens, which you won't, this will smooth everything out for you. Now it's almost done, in just a moment I will open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes a couple hours, but I can do it. So, the lens is dried off. Let's see. I'm going to grab my screwdriver. I need a Phillips head screwdriver, so I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to do a little bit of Lefty Lucy until the eye wire opens up. Turn this around. Let's go ahead and get the lens mounted in there. And I can go ahead and tighten the screw down. And we are good to go. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the left. I'm going to take your left lens, flip that over to L. And again, the magnet is going to hold it in place into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Hit the green button, which is start. The door closes, the clamp shuts. My flashlight is dying. You know, I've got a smaller flashlight, I just can't find it. But again, it's going to trace the shape of the lens. You can see as it's going around, tracing the shape of the frame. And as always, measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, and of course you have no edge thickness whatsoever. So, while that is cutting, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the right lens to make sure it is cut perfectly. Go ahead and take that off now. The sticker is no longer needed as well. Dry everything off. So we're going to come back down to here and we're going to inspect the lens in my dusty Marco 101 lensometer. I'm going to put it in and I'm going to read, let's turn it on, read the prescription off the top and I'm getting zero. So there is no prescription in the top of the lens. We are going to read the bifocal strength and I'm going to read plus 150, which is exactly halfway between 1 and 2. Now, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. 
It starts at zero, which we in the business called Plano. That's the abbreviation for Plano, P-L. Other people call that a city in Texas, but it goes up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter, 150. So you are still 2020 for far away. You don't need anything for driving or watching TV, but you need six steps of magnification to see everything clearly. So you will have that. You can wear these all the time instead of getting over the counter reading glasses. You can wear these constantly. And of course, these are transition lenses that will darken when you go outside. So it's just like looking through clear window pane in the top and you'll have a plus 150 magnification in the bottom. Now, the lower the number, the farther away you can hold things. If you have long arms, most doctors will prescribe that for that. People with shorter arms like it up here. And of course, I have this programmed into my computer. So years from now, if you need a stronger lens, a plus 175 or a plus two, I can cut these lenses. I will not need the frame. I can ship you the lenses only. And as long as you have a tiny Phillips head screwdriver, you can mount these at home yourself. Now this frame, the Ray-Ban 6317, sells for $170. A bifocal lens is $59.99. The transition adds $59.99 for a total of $289.98. This frame does come in several colors. It's a great vintage looking frame. And I'll send it right to your home. Plus, years from now, Mark, should you need any prescription lenses, I can cut them for this frame too. Mail them right to Longmont, Colorado. Now, I don't know, I don't know what's going on in Longmont, Colorado, but this is the second pair of glasses I've shipped to your city within seven days. So I don't know what's going on out there, why people need glasses, unless you guys are talking amongst yourself. Go ahead, talk amongst yourself while I work on this. So Lefty Lucy, let's go ahead and tuck the lens in. Actually, let me clean this off. Make sure all the optical debris is away from the edge of the lens. Tuck that in there. Tighten the screw down. And we're good to go. Let's go ahead and take this block off. We can come down here and measure again. Make sure to check the left lens, check the power, make sure that is clear. True, no prescription. Let's check the, I don't take my word for it. Zero, again, no prescription, Plano. Check the bifocal strength. And we are getting plus 150, exactly halfway between one and two. Now your pupillary distance, your near pupillary distance is 58. I'm gonna place my PD stick against the inside corner of your bifocal lens. And then when we measure on the left-hand side, let me put the card there so you can see, although it might be hard for you to see the lens anyway. And we're getting 58 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. I do want to check one other measurement. So that is uniform on both sides. That it is. I can also test by placing this across and measuring that, that is flat. Now, this is what your lenses look like while they are clear. Actually, hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me back up and clean these off. But... When you get these in the mail, Mark, there is a very small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take my Ray-Bans off and I set them on the counter, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. For those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer in color 6053, which is the blue crystal, which matches my shirt today, the blue with the pinstripe. I always try and match. So this is what your lenses look like clear. And of course, not only am I going to include instructions on how to care for your eyeglasses and lenses, but I'm going to include instructions on how to care for your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I will provide. So those two will last you for years. No other seller on the internet is doing that. I also include a photo request to have your picture on the website. Mark, I'd love to have you rocking these with the mountains in the background. And of course, I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure it works before I send it to you. And you are getting your Broncos orange on here. Hopefully you're a Broncos fan. 
but this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate the transitions part of your lens, which means I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. And I will do that over here in the corner. And as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to virtually clear. Now Mark, this is important. Pay attention. As you can see, all transition lenses will darken on day one, giving them two weeks of exposure to the sun. And they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks. After that, they will reach, reach their peak color and work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield has UV protection to prevent your upholstery from rotting or your dashboard from cracking from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now, as soon as you, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Or as soon as you step out of the car, they'll darken. This is also important. They're temperature sensitive, meaning they will darken when it's 85 degrees and below better than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside but being in colorado with the cooler weather you have they'll get very very dark now this is the first time they have been activated don't worry mark they're going to get much darker than this come on mark don't you remember we talked about this but anyway that's it if anyone has any questions about what i can or can do just email me through this link or through free prescription lenses at gmail.com or the contact me button on the website. So Mark in Longmont, Colorado, hope you enjoyed watching as I cut a bifocal lens with no power in the top and a 150 power in the bottom and of course transitions gray for your Ray-Ban 6317 color 2836 in the 49 eye size. The color 2836 is a matte brown. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.